This is AEDT 2150U, Digital Technologies and Advanced Teaching Methods. The title for this particular video clip is Web 2.0 Pedagogy or Authentic Social Learning with Technology. In this video clip, we will analyze the ideas that underlie a possible Web 2.0 pedagogy. The analysis questions for this particular video clip are as follows. What is the difference in outcomes between teacher-generated content and web content? What is the banking concept of education? How does technology allow teachers to break down the walls of the classroom? Consider this scenario. Matt is a high school teacher who would like to upgrade his skills. Despite the fact that he has a baccalaureate in computer sciences and English, he lacks the proper training to integrate technologies in his pedagogical activities. He took two summer additional qualifications about the impact of information and communication technologies in the classroom, but most of the knowledge he acquired during that course was short-lived. He learned about software that could be used to learn how to speak English as a second language, and he created a website with some activities and links to videos. However, Matt noticed that the software had some flaws and students didn't really learn how to speak English when interacting with the computer. They learned to memorize and to pronounce words that they never got to apply in context with native speakers. The website was unfortunately short-lived. Once students did the activities that Matt had prepared, they never consulted the website again. Matt didn't have time to create more activities during the year and figured that it was too much work for a little success with the students. Some of his colleagues told him not to bother with using technologies in the classroom because the students were using them everywhere else in their lives and it wouldn't really hurt them to focus on non-technology related events. Yet, Matt is convinced that there has to be a solution to the problem of learning English above and beyond what the books teach. In addition to this, despite the fact that he really wants his students to learn how to speak English, he is unable to be the sole designer and organizer of their learning experiences. They have to become active. Rather than tackling the problem as a teacher, during the Christmas break, Matt decides to begin his own journey in learning to speak French. When he was in school, Matt was in the French immersion program, but he never got around to speaking French fluidly. This bothers him a lot because his father's side's relative are francophone from Quebec City. He feels as though he has no relationship with his nieces, nephews and cousins because of language barriers. In addition to this, when he travels in France, in Quebec and in other Canadian francophone communities, he feels as though he's an outsider. On a personal standpoint, he is convinced that if he managed to overcome his own second language issues, he would be able to help his students better. Matt decides he will try to listen to at least one TV program per day in French and to read the French news online. He joins a few social networks and he starts to like Facebook pages related to French news and French programs. Soon, he starts to engage in discussions related to various events and people start to add him in their friends list. He also connects with his nephews and nieces and cousins through Facebook. He tries to make a point of commenting on their activities once in a while and he makes some French status updates on a daily basis. When he has nothing to say, he posts a quote that he likes. Sometimes people don't understand his status updates and they comment on it in order to get clarification. This helps Matt improve his French. Gradually, he starts to use the Facebook chat tools and communicate with his contacts in what he calls franglais. He tries to write in French, but because of the rapidity of the chat, he sometimes has to refer to f English words. This doesn't bother any of his friends because they understand English anyway. After communicating in French from December to June, Matt decides to travel to Quebec City to meet his relatives and to connect with a few virtual friends he met from Montreal. In face-to-face -face conversations, Matt still feels clumsy, but he feels as though he has connected with enough people to allow himself to speak fr franglais as they call it. Matt realizes that he has a long way to go, but for the first time in his life, Matt is communicating with people in French and he is allowing himself to make the mistakes actually 
all the mistakes he needs to make in order to get into conversations. In Montreal, he needs to constantly remind people that he wants to speak French because when they realize that he has a hard time, they switch to English. In Quebec City, however, the situation is not the same. People are not as fluent in English, but they are patient enough to help him out. His nephews, nieces and cousins teach him a few words and tell him how to pronounce it à la québécoise. Matt returns to Toronto after his vacation, feeling as though he hit two birds with one stone. First, he connected with his family and made a few friends. Second, he improves his French to a point where he feels as though he can now have a conversation with a native speaker. Note what was different between how Matt's students are learning English and how Matt is learning French. What was the role of the web, or the web 2.0 in this case? Before we jump to the synthesis questions, let's look at one of Freire's critical concepts called the banking concept of education. In Chapter 2 of The Pedagogy of the Oppressed, Paulo Freire talks about the narrative structure of education. A teacher talks and the students listen to what he or she says. Freire said that education suffers from narration sickness because the content in a narration is lifeless. The teacher fills students with content that is detached from the student's reality. This is what Popper calls the bucket theory of mind. Words are repeated but have no transformative power. They are lifeless and disconnected from actions. The teacher's role is to deposit knowledge in the student's head. The students need to memorize the content and repeat it on tests. Of course, students are free to classify this information as they wish, but in the end, Human beings are adaptable and manageable. Freire says, Education, as the exercise of domination, stimulates the credulity of students with the ideological intent, often not perceived by educators, of indoctrinating them to adapt to the world of oppression. This accusation is not made in the naive hope that the dominant elites will thereby simply abandon the practice its objective is to call the attention of true humanists to the fact that they cannot use the banking educational methods in the pursuit of liberation, for they would only negate that very pursuit. Nor may a revolutionary society inherit these methods from an oppressor society. The revolutionary society which practices banking education is either misguided or mistrusting of people. In either event, it is threatened by the specter of reaction. The reason why this concept is important is that much of our contemporary educational system was built around the, ban the banking concept of education. In such, we replicate the pedagogy of oppression that we were taught, and it is very difficult to escape it. However, Web 2.0 and learning-generated content is much different. The synthesis questions for this video clip are the following. How is Matt's scenario different from the banking concept of education that Freire refers to? Discuss the differences in learning outcomes. And finally, how could Matt safely integrate this kind of learning with technology in his classroom? What are his challenges?